to be here and to talk to you guys about how to recruit working coaches using sneak peeks because I know that when you're here is not to build a team of discount coaches. You are here because you want to recruit awesome working coaches who want to be there with you, who want to do this and who want to be on your team and who want to do this with you, right? That's the dream. Um, so I am really excited to share with you because I am, I've been in this business for, oh my gosh, almost four years in May. And I had a little bit of a late start in terms of growing a team. And I have had a major shift. And that is why I feel like I am capable and ready to share with you um, how sneak peeks have changed the game for me. Um, so to give you a little background on myself, um, I actually really resonated with today's national wake-up call. Mika, Mika talked about um, being in attraction marketing first and not doing those invites. And that was very much me. I used to be, or I started in my coaching business for the business, which is kind of rare now, right? Um, but it was more of a hobby. And I actually had a blog about running and I had done P90X several years prior um, and had blogged about that. And so I was already kind of sharing in the fitness on Instagram and on social media in the fitness world already. Um, I, I didn't really try to grow my blog or really grow my Instagram. I didn't even know how to do that, but I had been sharing. So um, from the get go, people were slowly trickling in, coming to me and, you know, friends and family were learning about it. And so from the get-go, I've had success. I've hit Success Club every single month since I joined, um, and I've missed Success Club 10 like twice. So I'm very successful at bringing in customers, but I never really could figure out the coach thing. And I, in retrospect, it was a lot to do with being scared of what other people thought and about coaching and being a little bit embarrassed, honestly, to say I was a Beachbody coach. And um, once I got over that, you guys, things changed because, and the way that I got over that was honestly falling in love with the community, falling in love with the programs, getting over myself and being like, I have something to share with people and who cares what anyone thinks. And honestly, the more that I was able to help my challengers get good results and the more that I was enveloped in our team and got to see other coaches on, my, on our team um, having success, the more I was on things like this, um, the more I really started to see the vision and see what this business could do for me because I wanted something. I'm an achiever. I'm like a big type A, like set a goal and go get person. But um, when it came to the recruiting side, I was just, I was letting fear hold me back. And um, I actually remember, it was actually funny. I had this breakthrough this last year where um, my coat or a girl that I had roomed with at my first summit three years ago told me, man, at that first summit, like you were skeptical. And it's funny because at the time I didn't realize I was skeptical. I thought that I was in. I remember being at summit and being like, I'm going to be diamond. I was an emerald coach sitting in the top of the bleachers. And I was like, I'm going to be on stage. I'm going to be a diamond. Like I'm going to be a diamond by the, right now but I still have those fears holding me back. And so it took me a little bit more time to get to Diamond from there. And um, I wasn't treating my business like a business. I was treating it like a hobby. I was not doing what I needed to do and I wanted to do it to do. Um, so what ended up happening was um, when I, I got pregnant with twins and, and when I was seven months pregnant with twins, honestly, when I was pregnant with twins, I started sharing me and I started attracting a lot of other twin moms who were pregnant and creating a community and I created a mom's like support group on Facebook where we were all pregnant and going through it together so it's just creating community and creating friendships um, and I didn't really know where my business was gonna go once the twins came because I was scared out of mind about what was gonna happen um, my husband was working full-time he was working from home which was nice um, and we had some help but I was like I don't know what's gonna happen with this business when these twins come so seven months pregnant my husband got laid off from his job, which was a blessing in disguise. It was really, really stressful and really, really scary um, because obviously health insurance is a huge thing. You're having twins. And um, we were like where we had just got a house and we had taken out basically our life savings um, to pay for the house. And so we were very financially strapped and the twins came and I just went all in with my fitness. I committed, I had gained, um, 45 or I don't remember 50 pounds with the twins and so when they were 
when they were born, I was really stressed and I even ate more and I gained a little bit of weight back. I did that both times in my pregnancies. And I just went all in with sharing through coaching, like the journey of going through um, that transformation of losing the weight. I, sh I took very like vulnerable photos of my postpartum body and then I shared myself showing up, working out every single day. And I invited every day and I had twins at home. I would be working out with twins in the bassinets and like, and doing it. And through that process, I got reinvigorated by coaching and I started getting more open to sharing it. And um, I started to speak because with the opportunity, I think Instagram stories also helped because I was able to share like the behind the scenes of coaching and a little bit more comfortable than those like main feed posts for me. Um, but it really was a turning point for me was I joined a group like similar to this called, it was called Fearless Recruiting and it was put on by some top coaches and I, I think I earned my spot into it and it was a big deal and I watched every single training video in that, you guys. I consumed everything these top coaches said and then I put it into action and that's what I'm encouraging you guys to do as you go through this. You got to take what we're saying and critically think and put into action. Say, I'm a CEO of my business. What do I need to change? What do I need to do? What's working for her and what's going to work for me? And that's what I did. And I went all in. I like, I went all in. I remember them saying how many coaches I needed to recruit. And I set that goal. And most of the time I didn't hit it, but I started recruiting more and more coaches. And through this, this was all through doing coaching sneak peeks. Um, so basically when I was pregnant with the twins at the seven months, when I was like my back's against the wall, I got something out of this. I had like four semi-working coaches. I didn't know how to mentor them. I, like I said, I had been relying on attraction marketing, so I didn't even, I wasn't doing a lot of invites. I didn't understand why they couldn't replicate what I was doing. And I was honestly just kind of, had no idea. So with time, with applying myself, with listening to these trainings, trying new things, doing things and failing, having coaches get scared away because I brought them on and gave them too much information. And then the, you know, vice versa, not doing enough. I've learned over time. I've just figured it out as I went. And the more people that you can bring in and talk to and get into your, and be doing this with, the faster you're going to figure it out. And I've, like now it's nice because I, I figured it out and I can teach my people how to do that too. Um, but this last year, um, 2019, I put on my calendar, it was after I did that fearless recruiting, I put on my calendar on January, the first Monday of January that I would be an elite coach. I said, start job as elite beach body coach. And I started showing up like an elite coach. Um, I ended up recruiting over 40 working coaches and we advanced to a two star diamond premier team. So I did not achieve my goal of elite, but I was so happy with the progress that I made. I set a big goal and I even remember someone saying, why don't you just shoot for premiere? Elite's a pretty big stretch. And I was like, no, I want to be elite and I'm going to go for it. Shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars, right? So that's what I did. And that's, I've just been on a mission to do my best. And now um, I am finally making a full-time income on part-time members, insert in income disclaimer, but this has been a dream of mine for a long time, basically since that, um, well, prior to has been getting laid off but once i decided it was going to happen i kind of was like i don't know if this can actually happen but i see all these other people doing it and i'm gonna try so here i am and i am really excited to be here and really honored that i was asked to be part of this group in the first place so thanks you guys for being here first i want to say about peaks you if you want to build to diamond and beyond First, I say that two stars where it's at because once I got there, my income has already doubled. Um, you need to be recruiting to a sneak peek or something every single month. There is no, not this month. This is how I used to be. I like, would have early on. I said, you know, I I thought probably should do these sneak peek things. And so me and my um, upline and another the four of us coaches would do like calls. And sometimes we would just like forget about them and we would like not do them. Or we would be like, do you guys have anyone going to be on? And they'd be like, no, not really. And be like, let's cancel. Or we'd like, like one would show up so we didn't have to do them. So no, that was not good. So have a sneak peek every month that you're recruiting to. So either that if you're in Christina's, you want to do recruit to her sneak peek, or you have your upline sneak peek, ask to be in it or create your own too, because 
I truly think that there is a difference between you adding people to someone else's sneak peek to you being part of it. When you're part of it, you have so much more drive to get someone to watch that freaking video that you spent time doing, right? Um, so I highly recommend doing your own, and if I have time at the end, I will explain exactly what I do in mine. Um, I will do that. But um, I want to give you some tips just for like recruiting to them. So the first thing that you're going to want to do just in general is always be talking about coaching in little ways. So this every day, I don't every day I don't say like, do you want to be a coach? Do you want to join my team? No, it's more like, okay, maybe we did a Zoom call and then I, I screenshot it and I say, you know, we had a great team call tonight or we want to, you know, talk, kind of talk about what we did in very high level, like kind of creating FOMO. Um, I'm not an energized dance party person because I'm totally awkward at dancing, but um, I'm just sharing like the community part of it because that was huge for me when I had the twins and I couldn't really get out of the house with all three of them. Having our community and having the home workouts was so key to me. So I want to be talking to the moms who are just like me. who are like, I want to be on a Zoom call tonight. Um, and then I share my successes. So if I'm recognized, I'm sharing that and sharing the journey of where I'm going. I also actually want to work on more is sharing where I want to go. And I was doing that in the early days, like just because you don't have a team doesn't mean that you can't talk to your leader. So I repeat that again, just because you don't have a team yet, you can't, doesn't mean you can't talk about how you're a leader. You can show up as a leader in your team. You can show up as a leader in your team cup team, even if they're not your people. You can show up as a leader in your, te your team page by sharing things that are working for you. You can share the successes of other people on your team and say, look at what you um, I recommend like talking about yourself though and not like say if I, you're my, I'm your coach, like sharing that I'm, I'm ranked whatever is not going to um, resonate with people as much because they don't know who I am. So make sure you're talking about yourself and what we are all doing together. Um, sharing like the activities that you get, if you ever go, if I like, definitely get to Summit, you guys, if you're not going to Summit, like you got to go to Summit. So go, go to it, show, like show the experience, show the FOMO. And that's one time where I'm like, overload your feed with beach because that's the energy is there and just do it. Um, but I just share the lifestyle too. So now I'm home with my girls, but I also have help. I have a nanny on Mondays and I share that I go to coffee on Monday morning and I'm sharing that lifestyle of like this is awesome I get to be at a coffee shop on Monday morning share the fact that I love my kids but I actually don't want to be with them all the time and so they are really hard I have my twins are almost are one almost two and my four-year-old so um, coaching gives me the opportunity to get out of the house and to do something me and all of that so I'm kind of just sharing the things I love about coaching and I'm also like kind of hang objections in my stories as well at times and so that's all part of the process to leading up to the sneak peek. So then I recommend before your sneak peek, one week out, treat it like a chat group. Like I'm getting people into this. Like give yourself a goal. Success club is three people. My minimum is always 10. Now my minimum is 20. And I say, I'm doing it. Say to yourself, I'm going to get 10 people into the sneak peek. Don't focus as much on how many people actually sign up, but focus on how many you can get into the group. So go for 20 people if you want to get ambitious um, or more. Say, I'm going to get just 20 people to even go to this info session or go to the page that I'm recruiting to. And then just start inviting. So do a main feed post. I highly recommend that. And tell your story. Tell something emotional. Don't write like, don't write, join my info session tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Learn how to, to be a coach. No, you want to tell a story. I like to tell, I'm very much into like I said, I was a blogger, or I am a blogger, so I'm very, I love writing. So I will tell a story of where I was before coaching and where I am today, and I usually pick a theme. So like I said, is it the low community? Is it the money now? If you're not making a lot of money, you can still be things like you paid for that week or little things. Like one of the coaches on my team shared that she got a cleaning lady for the first time. That's amazing. She works full time. That's a huge burden lifted off her. Um, and just tell you're telling a story and not being in people's faces like you know join the thing um and then i will also do a series in my stories on instagram so i i'm almost exclusively on instagram um not facebook so i will do the app i use the app unfold and i will make like a story series where i tell a little bit about my story as a like into beach body in general like a few slides and then i'll do some slides about my coaching story and then i'll lead into like why why coaching so great like community and i'll show pictures of like at the success club trip or at like a zoom or, or a picture of us at super saturday and then i'll do like a next slide would be 
you know, like I, sometimes I do share the income part where I made like $8,000 or whatever in coaching to add to my family's income while working full time. Income to the same are on those slides. Um, and then I'll add a slide that's like, I can do this from anywhere. And it's me like, you know, with a phone that's out, like waiting somewhere, looking at my phone. And then like with my kids. Um, so this is called Unfold. And you can make these in advance. They kind of make the original one. But the cool thing is once you make it, you can just download it. And then um, each month you could kind of just a couple of the photos or the wording and then just use it again the next month. And so at the end of this, I will say we are having an interested in learning more. We're having a coach info session. Follow, so we do ours on Instagram. So I'll follow at, at the name. Um, and so I'll do an unfold one. And then so today, for another example, we have an info session starting tomorrow. Today I did a story series where I just spoke to the camera. So I like to do this, especially when I have a lot of energy, like I just drink Energize or just did a workout or I just went live here or I'm like pumped, I just signed up a coach. I'm in a good state of mind and a good state of energy. And then I'll go on Instagram and I'll just speak to the camera about something. So today I kind of addressed the objection of being like a salesperson. Um, and it definitely would have taken me a while. It took me a while to get to the point where I was comfortable just like sharing that on um, Instagram, but I wish I had done it earlier because the best thing you can do is like erase those objections from people's minds. So I kind of talked about that and then did just, you know, at the end, invited people to the story to the watch the count. Um, and I also always post in my challenge group. So every single month I do at least one post that says, you know, a little bit of the story. I switch it up, different pictures, different whatever. And they say, hey, we're having this info session. You guys are awesome challengers. You should come. So these are all the public invites I'm doing. And then on the back end, like I said, I'm treating this like a challenge group. And it's really important if you're going to be a business building coach to hit Success Club in the first half of your month or whenever so that you're not stressed out about Success Club in the final two weeks when you're doing your sneak peek. That's how I set it up. Co challenge group in the first half, sneak peeks and stuff in the second half, and getting helping my coaches get to Success Club so that I'm not like stressed out both at the same time. Um, so the private invites. Now I'm going to invite every new, every challenger, every new challenger. Um, and this is where you can't discriminate. So don't assume they're not participating because they're a lawyer, because they're X, Y, Z, because of whatever it is that they don't want to be a coach because you just never know. So always throw it out there and just say, like, especially if they are participating, give them love, instill them with belief and tell them, Hey, I've noticed you're doing an awesome job in the group and you seem to love these programs as much as me. Do you want to, um, have you ever thought about coaching? Would you want to watch this info session? No obligation, just check it out. Like very simple. I don't like do a giant here. Um, and this is either an email or this is an Instagram. Like if I'm like mostly communicating with Instagram, then I would write that in Instagram or even send a voice mes message. Um, and then I also will go back to that story series I did like in an unfold or um, where I'm talking and I'll go and see who made it like who watched through the entire story series and then I'll go invite some of those people it kind of depends I go and invite every single person that watches it I like I had a conversation with someone where I will invite them that's like similar to what I was saying I resonated with the wake-up call a lot today because just generally not a cult like I don't invite I don't do a ton of invites without having a prior conversation, but I will send coaching invites sometimes if I can really tell that they're watching or if they're private. And um, I'll be like, you know, you're watching it. I'm just going to send you the invite about coaching and you never know. So I'll do those and do the challenge, the challenger ones. And um, I'm also inviting throughout the month in general, but this is really when I really go back. So then I'm back to anyone who's ever watched the info session previously or ever invited because I've written all their names down. So this is the accountant in me. I have an Excel spreadsheet and I have name in one column where I found them or where I invited them in another column. Instagram handle, if, you know, if that's how I invited them. And then a note, like a notes. And then I have a column for every month. And I think I got this from Melanie Mitro. Um, and so like there's a column for February 2020, January, just blah, blah, blah. blah. And I put a tally every night and invite them. So a girl that I just signed up a few days ago, for example, I went back and looked. And so in February of 2019, she followed the info session account. She's a twin mom. Um, 
you know, I, I followed up with her and connected with her and then she joined and she didn't watch the videos. And then I invited her again and again and again, six, seven times. But we also connected on many other ways during this time, not just me inviting her. And then she joined last week. So it's very much about being consistent. Like just because they watch the info session doesn't mean they're gonna sign up this time, but it might mean they sign up later. So don't forget about them and don't forget to follow up with them and don't forget that they're human and they're not just interested in coding. So get to know them. Um, so what if someone actually follows the account? Say they're like, yeah, I do, do watch. You're like, great, okay, yes. Yay, someone wants to watch it. So don't just leave it at that. Don't just assume that they're going to go watch the video and come back to you and be like, yes, I'm ready. I'm so great. I'm so ready. Because that's not, that does happen as often as you would. I wish we, it was that easy. So, and you know, I mean, think about you, how you joined and what questions you had and what reservations you had. And that helps put your things into perspective. Like I said, I actually don't have that perspective because I was just one of those coaches who was like, okay, I'm going to sign up. And I never did an info session. But um, just think about like what it took for you to sign up. And that kind of helps you put things into perspective. So I recommend it. So you have the Instagram account and say someone followed the account from your story. So I always go and greet them as soon as they follow, as soon as they see that they followed, I'll have to accept it. And I'll say, I'll go to, back to my account because they're in a different account. So for example, our info session is called like Fit and Balanced Info. So I'll see that they follow that account and then I'll come back to Fitness Fatal account and I'll message them and say, hey, I saw you saw you followed the info session account. So great for you to see the videos. What interests you most? And so that usually gives me if they respond, which they don't always, but if they do, that usually they usually write like a paragraph and tell me why they want to coach, basically. Like that is the what you need to know. You need to know why they want to coach. Do they want the accountability? Do they want the money? Do they are they fin you know financially strapped? Are they um you know they want community, do they want fulfillment? Like your goal is in those conversation to continue the conversation with them so that you get to know them and get to know like what they want. And so I encourage you in this time to just don't like just if they say this big paragraph to ask more questions to engage to get to know them more. And then you know kind of at one point if you feel like it's going well just be like okay great well I just can't wait for you to watch the videos they'll be up starting tomorrow and um, you know. I hope you enjoy it or something. I don't know, but I will finally if it, the conversation's going i'm not going to continue it forever. But then the day the videos are posted I go back and I say hey we post our videos in three days. So if, for, if you're doing the diesel nation one where it's just a call, that's pretty easy because you can just say, especially if you know they were on the call, you could follow up and hey, I saw you were on the call. What did you, what interests you most, like, or what stood out to you most? Ask them a question that's kind of positive to spin it on the positive side to see where they're going. And then this is often where you'll get either, I didn't have a chance to watch <laughs> or uh, no, I didn't see them. So if they say, a chance to watch always say great when do you think that you'll be able to watch them and i'll check in with you then so they're like okay i gotta watch the videos so that she'll check in with me um and if they do if they say oh, oh or they just ignore you then you just pack later um but if they respond and say i um i did watch them and i just um i just don't think it's for me like usually i'll say what part of it do you not think is for you at the same like we're not in the business of trying to convince anyone to do anything they don't want to do right so um but i want to know explore this a little bit maybe it's just a limiting belief they have about themselves because a lot of times they're like i can't see myself doing what you do um especially if you do are like me and you have more followers it's a little, a little more intimidating right your main goal as a coach is to be relatable so that people can see themselves doing what you do so keep that into mind also if you are someone who doesn't have a big following and you're kind of newer just think you're just doing you're making it simple right you just started and they should be able to see themselves doing what you do right because that's what they'll be doing they'll be a new coach it's a little, almost even harder when they see you as like this expert and they don't want to um they can't imagine themselves doing what you're doing so you kind of have to bridge that gap depending on um where you're at in your coaching but just kind of dig into their response and always when they give you an objection dismiss it or say like no that's not true always say like i could see why you'd see that or i felt that way too and then kind of go into um why you know kind of just address the objection don't dismiss it and um continue the conversation as best 
best you can, but it might be time to just leave it and then come back later. It's kind of just to play it by ear. Um, the best is when someone watches them and is like, yay, I want to sign up. And that's awesome. Um, but like I said, it's usually going to take a few conversations. So don't like wait, don't add someone to the account and then wait until like four days later to finally write, reach out um, and say, what do you think? Because you might have lost some momentum there. You want to be building the relationship. So um, on the last day, you always want, or the day after, depending, um, you definitely want to follow up and be like, hey, like, so excited. I hope you were able to watch the videos. Just what, you know, you can tell them when your next coach training is. So we usually schedule ours for the Monday afterwards. The next co coach workshop is starting on Monday. Options for me. Um, that's kind of the way I, I go about it. Um, and then try to just get the conversation and create a little bit of urgency. Like it'd be great if we could get, you know, you could sign you up like the Friday before the workshop so we could get you going before we start on Monday. Um, and that's the way I do it. And if everyone, I would say out of like 10 people who watch the info session, I might have one to two sign up as a coach that month. So maybe three if I'm lucky. And um, so that's where it comes into perspective. Like if you say like how many working coaches do I have this month, think of how many people you got to have in the info session. Um, and then obviously there's some luck where like certain months are just better and certain months you're not going to get as many. So um, just about building relationships and Remember that it's not just about adding people, it's about that back, that back relationship. Let me just take a look at my notes. I did write a couple sample invites. So like if a post about coaching, like a main feed post, and if I would do an invite to someone for that, I would, this is like an example. I would say, hey, thanks for the support of my post about coaching. This has really changed my life. Would you want to be added to our coach info session to learn a little bit more about it? If you were just supporting me, then thank you. I really appreciate it, but wanted to ask or like something like that. I kind of give them an out my style. Um, and another one that's, you know, I mean, depending if you are like, if you are feeling nervous about asking someone and you really do it with them, like, don't be afraid to invite those people. You guys, this was something that really helped me get over this. I used to only invite people that I was like, oh, like they probably need this or like to ask people who had more followers than me to coaching, but. I do something like this, like, hey, I'm a little nervous to ask. I wanted to reach out because you're someone I admire and would love to work with. Would you want to learn more about what I do as a coach for you? If not, no worries, but wanted to ask. So that's another example of an invite I might send to someone who's like obviously like up on social media, showing their fitness, like they have followers, and you're like, oh, I'm a little nervous because I think like you're too cool, but don't be afraid to ask people. You never know. You really never know. Um, all right, so like I said, most, most people so keep their name down and keep going back. Don't get discouraged. So if you like say, this is what I always tell my coaches, like you, you, you're not gonna just show up one day and be the leader you wanna be. You have to be planting seeds for months and months and months. And if you decide one day, like I want a team, like, like the summit when I was like sitting in the boondocks being like, I wanna be on stage. I hadn't done the work to be on stage yet. But in my head, I was like, it's going to happen now that a switch has gone off. I'm just going to magically get it. And no, I had to start planting the seeds for them to sprout and turn into this business that I have now and that I will have in the future. So don't get discouraged if you do the sneak peek once and then like no one joins a month. You're like, oh, man, guess with yourself. Did you have three people watching? Because if you do my my stats, three people watching per month, you're going to get one coach in three, three months doing that. So you got to get more, you have to have more conversations going. So this has to be a bigger part of what you're doing, not just recruiting to challenge groups. Um, so just really quickly, I know I'm really going to 30 minutes here. So our Instagram sneak peek, I'm happy to answer questions um, about how it works, but we do it on Instagram. I do it with my personally sponsored coaches and we actually have three different accounts. Um, and we split up topics. So we do a, a video. We each share in the top in the video. We try to keep it to five to seven minutes. And we IGTV and this private account. So they have to request to follow. And we do first two to the story and then like four minutes on the topic. And the topics are like how the business works and how we make money. Um, the systems we have coaching and how you'll get started. The how so, social media and overcoming those fears and objections. And um, this last one, oh, how to fit into your busy day. So we attract a lot of busy moms um, who want need to work in power pockets and 
What? Those are the four that we use. And then we have been sprinkling, we put in like a post between them where we share like pictures from Summit and pictures from um, like kind of like the first. Um, I think I'm going to change it this month though and do more stories because um, I think that people just like to look at stories more. So I think I'm going to do some stories. But at the end of the day, your sneak peek's never going to be perfect. I'm always changing mine. But it's really about the relationship building and the sprinkling of coaching into your main social media profile. Just have an honest look, like, like talk with yourself right now and think, am I holding back? Do I not fully believe in this? Why? And then if you need to like journal, like what you love about coaching and just everything you love about it and maybe write some of your fears about what you think is going to happen. If, you know, are you afraid that someone's going to like laugh at you, you join and you're not going to know how to handle them and they're going to quit or like all these, like the fears that you have and just re like, I think just run out helps. So I hope that helped and feel free to ask any questions you have and I will definitely answer them um, but, but I really I really really believe you guys that this mindset shift and saying I'm gonna recruit to sneak peeks take some notes on what I wrote and hopefully I'll give you the confidence that you can do it um, because you guys can so have a great day